Hail Metal Heads! Welcome to this episode of Mental Mastication. I'm your host, Brett Hogue, and while my wife does refer to me as the machine in certain situations, I have never had a run-in with the Russian Mafia. Today we are at the lovely home of our gracious host and guest, Sean Duncan, and I also just got a text message by bass extraordinaire Billy Sheehan. He will be joining us towards the end of the show. Right now, let me introduce to you our gracious host and first guest, Mr. Sean Duncan, the drummer of L.A. Guns, Social Disorder, DC4, Killer B, and I'm missing one. Odin! Odin. What are we making? <clears throat> well, I got some baby back ribs in here. They're barbecuing and in, the, in my big green egg. Ooh! They got started. And then over here, we have some chicken and some potatoes. And we're pretty close. All I got to do is I'm going to grill some asparagus in a bit and tie it all together and we should be good. Right on. So what got you into cooking? You're known as a drummer. You're not known as a cook or a barbecue master. <laughs> well, when I had my son, I needed a job job. And so I went into catering uh, in the movies. I've always liked to cook. Ever since I was a little kid, we, I have two siblings that are like, we're literally two years apart. So... My mother was obviously very busy, so if I wanted something, I, made, I, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to make it. Later in, in life, I worked for this catering company, and we did, did movies and everything, and I started out doing tables and chairs. The next thing I knew, I was doing, making all the salads. Then I was working in the, in the big truck doing um, breakfast, and then I was the assistant chef, and then I was running the truck, and I was chefing for various shows and when you're on a, like I worked on JAG, the TV show JAG, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. for two and a half years. And so you were, you have to constantly be like coming up with new stuff. So I saw a lot of food made a lot of different ways, a lot of different sauces and salsas and all that stuff. So that was basically my, where I learned. And then I took over, my uncle had a restaurant in Silver Lake called The Coffee Table. Mm. And um, they were having some trouble because the kitchen couldn't keep up. So I went in and uh, streamlined the menu. Now, now I'm just playing music and I'm really happy. You know, the record company made all the money, publishing companies made, you didn't really make a lot of money unless you were huge, mm, right? Okay. Uh, you make your money on your merch and you make your money on meet and greets and you make your money on shows and playing live. Come to the, come to the shows. Come to the show, live a lot music, of fun. it's where it's at. It, it is, it is, it's a lot of fun. People, you know, after COVID, people forgot how much fun it was. And now every now the whole live scene is picking way up. Yeah, so when you're when you're touring with LA Guns here on the East Coast, are you flying there? Are you taking a tour bus? How, how is that? We usually fly to the first uh, city that we're going to be playing in and the, the bus meets us. And then from there, we, we travel in bus. I like it. Yeah? Yeah, you know. You're not tired? No, man. It's, it, well, yeah, you're exhausted. It's, 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 it's tiring to do it. It's, it, it. There's a lot of downtime. But it's, it's fun. You're a gypsy. And, you know, it's like. So what are you doing on the road then to pass your downtime? <laughs> it, it, basically read a lot of books. Who's your favorite author? Oh, you know what? It, it, Right now, it's it's uh, Brendan Sanderson, who who um, I've just finished four of his 700, 1100 page books. You know Stephen King, and there's so there is I'm really like indiscriminate about. What's your what favorite genre? Do you have oh, one? I, I, yeah, if you have if, if it has dragons and swords and wizards, I'm like all about hack and slay. <laughs> hack and slay. It is that's the it. best. It, it is the best. Oh yeah, L.A. Guns. So. Yeah. Um, I read online that uh, you were brought in as a touring drummer, uh, but now I think you're a permanent member, so you'll be recording with them? You know, I don't know what's going on with the next album yet, because nobody's even started working on it, because we're still touring on the Black Eyed Diamonds album. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping to play, play on it. I'd, I'd like to. How'd you, get, how'd you get the touring gig? <laughs> well, it goes back a ways. And when I was out on tour with Bullet Boys, we were sharing a bus with Tracy and Rudy Sarzo. And they had a band called Gunzo. And um, me and Tracy became good friends on that tour and remained in contact after. A matter of fact, the opening band on that was Killer Bee, hmm. which Anders Laurent Blom, I went and did a, I did a tour in the UK with Killer Bee um, after that tour. 
and then I did recorded an album with them, and we went to Israel and did a bunch of other cool shit. Oh, that is cool. Yeah, it's, it's it was neat, but that's kind of how the social disorder thing came in. But to get to guns is I would text Tracy every once in a while, hey, if you need a drummer, or hey, how you doing, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. And then one day out of the blue, I got a text from, from Tracy, and it said, hey, what are you, are you busy this summer? That's, that's all it said. Are you busy this summer? Are you busy this summer? And I'm like, well, what do you need? You know, let me know. You know, he goes, I'll, I'll get right back to you. And then like the next day, he said, yeah, so management's probably going to get a hold of you, but you know, you're, you're open. And I'm going, I need to know details. <laughs> and so management calls me and they're call, talking to me. He goes, it's this, it's this, it pays this much. We need you to be, it's nine weeks. And I'm like, nine weeks, it's a long freaking time. It is a long time. And, so, and it was all with Kiefer. Yeah. It was, uh, it was Tom Kiefer, LA Guns, and Faster Pussycat. It was a lot of fun, and all friends. Because when I was out with Bullet Boys, we played with, with uh, Faster Pussycat on another tour. It was with uh, Quiet Rat. Mm. And uh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, I so, bet. So we're all friends. And then I knew everybody in LA Guns except Phil. Um, I knew I knew Johnny from playing locally. Mm -hmm. He's an LA boy. Uh, actually, he's OC, but he's from here. And Ace, I knew from touring with Faster Pussycat. So I knew everybody except Phil. I just didn't know Phil. And um, so they brought me in. Uh, I did. <laughs> Here's their song list. Okay, okay, we're gonna do rehearsals. We rehearsed for like two days, and then boom. We're wow. Gone, right. And so it was a lot of, it was a learning curve while, yeah. we're, while we were out there, but it was fun, you know? And, um, you know, next thing I knew it was another tour. And then we were on the Kiss Cruise and we were on the, the eighties cruise. And ever since then, it's just been nonstop. And, uh, again, like I said, we're going out again on March 6th and then we're going out in the summer. I don't have details on that. And I've heard, uh, pretty strong rumors of heading over to europe oh right so. on what about south america you're, you're i don't know i haven't that? heard anything about south, about south america yeah i haven't we i haven't played in south america personally oh really yeah my huh. brother has several times but i haven't and your played. brother is jeff duncan from jeff Ar duncan from armored saint another metal hall of fame inductee that's right that's so right. we got to get that in there yeah that's um, my that's my younger brother and we founded odin Odin. Now, for those of you who remember, <laughs> you might want to go back to the cult classic, The Decline of Western Civilization Part Two: The Metal Years, directed by another Metal Hall of Famer, Penelope Spheres. Now, rumor, I read on the internet, and we know that can be a bunch of bullshit, or it can be real, so please correct me or shed light. I heard a rumor that you may have been involved in prepping Chris Holmes for his infamous pool scene in that movie. Is yeah. there any truth to that rumor, sir? Yeah, but yeah. That, Chris was uh, like really instrumental in Odin's uh, growth. He used to come to our rehearsals and, and we did, um, we opened up for Wasp. He had us open up for Wasp on a Saturday night, prime, you know, direct support for the blood drive at the Troubadour. And it was just crazy. And then that's really what launched us. Anyway, Chris was like always at all our, our shows. We even had our local shows. When he was in town on our rider, we had a bottle yeah. of vodka and a bottle of grapefruit juice for him. Right on. So right on. long story short, when we were shooting the hot tub scene, we were obviously drinking. And Chris was there, who was off camera. He wasn't shooting yet. His, right. scene, wasn't, his scene wasn't until later. And um, he was just pounding away with us. And then that next thing you know, they were heading up to, uh, when we were done, Right. Um, they went up and shot the scene with Chris. The scene with Chris, okay. Yeah. So you may, <laughs> so obviously you kind of prepped him for that scene, right? What do they call it, pre-gaming? Is that what they, the kids call it these yeah, days? Yeah, pre-game. <laughs> so yeah, he's pre-gaming and then he was drinking in the pool too. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great scene. Yeah, uh, it's a great movie. It's a if classic. you haven't seen it, uh, you have to see this movie. It is amazing. Um, so let's talk about uh, the band with your brother. Then, other than Odin, what else have you done with Jeff? DC Four. 
And DC stands for Duncan clan. Yeah. Right. Yes. I figured that out all by myself. Yeah, that's it. And, and, and a majority, the reason we did it because we always had, uh, singer issues. So one time I've told Jeff, I said, you know, what, you're just going to have to sing. And so we did DC four with, it was, uh, me, Jeff, Rowan Robertson played with Dio and, um, my youngest brother, Matt. Ah, and, and what does Matt play? Bass. Okay. So did Jeff had to learn how to sing and play at the same time? No, because he already could do it, you know? And it, it was like just, he wrote everything anyway. And it, and it just made our lives a lot easier so we could do stuff. So we ended up recording five albums. Oh, right on. And um, I've only heard one. Sorry. Yeah, it's all right. But well, actually, one EP and four albums. Yeah, it was the EP I, heard, I yeah. listened to. It's good music. Yeah, it's fun. And, and uh, that's basically dc4 and and it's not we're not active at the moment uh because well rowan's doing the rock vault in vegas jeff lives in vegas and he's out with armored saint matter of fact he's in town right now they're rehearsing and they're going to go on the monsters ah, of rock cruise you know i want to get him on there. i want to do the monsters of rock cruise with know, armored right? saint is what i want to do yeah. yeah well yeah i wish i wish we were playing that <laughs> right? way. um but but that's basically where where you know, where it all came from and, and what it is. And that led to, I'm assuming, social disorder. Yeah, uh, social disorder came around during COVID. And when did you just drop a new album that was yesterday? Yeah, it just came out yesterday on Pride and Joy Music, uh, which is a label out of Germany. Okay, and, and I did get a chance to listen to that. It is very good. Uh, it's very varied. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of different styles on there, so it's not, you can't just say like it's, you know, heavy metal or hard rock. Uh, there's some there's some good ballads. I'm not a ballad guy, but there are some good ballads in there. The drumming is superb. Thank you. I must say. Uh, so check out the new Social Disorder. It just dropped yesterday on all streaming platforms, correct? Yes. Yeah, it's all yeah. out now. So how did that come? To, who wrote that stuff? Let's start there. Uh, it, it's an interesting story. So around the time of COVID, just before COVID happened, uh, Anders got a hold of me and... Um, had demos and he goes hey can you put some drums on these demos and i'm like okay so i just thought i was doing something for anders and so i went in and i recorded and, and they sent them back to him and the next thing i know he goes hey tracy's gonna play on this <laughs> and i go on what <laughs> <laughs> and he goes the the stuff you sent me i go i go really and he goes yeah and the next thing i know oh rudy's gonna play on this sarzo yeah and, and then i'm like Really? And then he had this singer that did these demos. And I'm like, who's the singer on these demos? Because that guy, you got to get that guy. His name's Thomas Norton. And he ended up doing the whole album. And he's a phenomenal singer. And uh, it just kind of like turned into a record. And I'm like, I kind of would like to do these tracks over again, you know? But, yeah, yeah. Because it was a, uh, I mean, I was playing to, it was all done remote. So I was playing this stuff that wasn't on a click or wasn't, you know, it's like, it was, it was difficult. Yeah, I'm sure. But I'm it was sure. fun. You know, it was a great experiment. And, and Anders just lets us each individually do what we want to do, what we feel. Right. So that was the first record. And then we did the same thing with the second record that happened during COVID. And fortunately we all had some time. Right. Yeah. And, um, and that brought in Finished Bjorn it. England into the fold. Yeah, Bjorn right? came in to do. He played on one song on it. We had we had a, a there was a guest artist on the last one. Oh, Jeff, mm, my brother yeah, Jeff played yeah. on the first one. Okay. And then um, this one, the guest is 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 Bjorn, and uh, the keyboard player is Dave Stone. David Stone, who played on Long Live Rock and Roll. Oh. And for me, oh, that was like. Oh. That was a full circle moment. I've yeah. had a few full circle moments in music. That was one because when I was starting out playing, um, I was practicing in my room one day and I was really into like Journey and, and Steve Smith and, and that kind of music, right? And my brother came in and he had long live rock and roll. I could still see his face. <laughs> he had long live rock and roll in his hand like this. He goes, you have to listen to this record. And I'm like, okay. So I put it down and first song we heard was Kill the King. And, um, you know, here's Dio. And I just like, listen to that singer. I'm like, listen to that fucking drummer. drummer yeah, right? yeah. It was Cozy Powell. Yeah, yeah. And that was my Cozy, first yeah, exposure yeah. To, to him. 
And that changed like my complete tra trajectory as to what kind of a drummer I, I, I ended up being more of a power drummer a la, you know, Bonzo, uh, Powell, you know, yeah. that kind. Yeah, yeah, um, And it was because of that record. So, so what, was, what was the first record you bought? Oh, it was Song Remains the Same. Song Remains the Same. I, yeah. I had that one. I still have that one. Actually. And the second yeah, one was, good... was Aerosmith Live Bootleg. Yeah. Oh, my first God, two those are great albums. albums. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are both great live albums, too. Yeah. Uh, so what was the first concert you saw? Oh, I saw Queen at the Forum with Freddie Mercury. What year was this? Oh, it was on the, uh, 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 I guess it would be 19, fuck, 70. No. They were, that was my second concert. The first concert I went to was in 1976 at the Coliseum. And it was um, Van Halen. It was two days. It was Van Halen, UFO, Aerosmith, Ted Nugent, Cheap <laughs> Trick, uh, Toto. Yeah. Like both days. Uh, and then a bunch <laughs> of uh, uh, Frank Marino, Mahogany Rush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. these bands, you know. It was, it was just it was my first concert experience. It's this massive festival. Yeah, that's unreal. Yeah, it was it was phenomenal. That's amazing. And, yeah. It had to be life changing. Yeah, it was. It was. So, so I, what, I was like, I want to do that. Right? Yeah. yeah I got to check the. Yeah, the absolutely. Stuff. Okay, let's check some food here. Uh, looks like we're going for the chicken. But where do you, where'd that joy of cooking come from? Who? How did you find that? Who gave that to you? Well, it probably came from mom, but it's just something I've always done, and it's creative, right? Right, so, right. And, it, and I have a busy mind, so it's good to have something to do to keep the busy mind busy. Um, and, and it's a never, it's like music. It's a never-ending journey of learning. You're constantly learning something. Right, I just yeah. learned something today. Somebody sent me this thing about tenderizing meat using kiwi. Oh, and I was like, really? So I looked, I huh. read, read the article on it, and I'm like, see, is that... now I learned something. Yeah, and to me, it's fascinating. I'm like, right. oh, yeah, that works because yeah. apparently there's one uh, uh, enzyme. Yeah, in it kiwi has to be chemical. Yeah, that, right. That's right. just yeah. like uh, it, it's uh, only in kiwis, huh. but it breaks down protein. Wow. It's supposed to be a phenomenal meat tenderizer. I'm like, well, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it now. Too. Yeah. I'm gonna have to go look that up. That sounds great. Yeah. Um, so basically, I'm gonna grill some asparagus. And um, and then that'll be it because everything's pretty much done. Done. I learned, like I said, I learned on the fly on trucks, and there was a there was a massive amount of of freedom in in what you were going to be doing, and so you just learned by you know some. I worked with some really incredibly talented chefs. Um, uh, Paul Rathburn was one uh, who is now. He's, he works with, uh, uh, oh, why can't I remember his name? Anyway, like he's a personal chef for like some really big yeah. stars. And, and, uh, and then there was a French chef named Gerard that I worked on X-Men with. And he taught me a lot. But it was a lot of it. It was, was trust yourself. Right. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so it, it's kind of the same with music. Like, like we said earlier, where we were sitting, where... It said, if you like it, then it's good. Right, yeah, yeah. Right, because it's really, yeah. ultimately, it's about making yourself happy. Because if you if you're make yourself happy, and hopefully everybody else will, will, will find that. Literally, yeah, you guys, if you're not following uh, Sean on social media, man, he does tons of food porn. <laughs> I know. Uh, and he's making it all, and he tells you what it is, and it's just unreal stuff yeah, that you're fun. making. It's fun. You know, it keeps me, like I said, it keeps me sane when, when ah, That's it's what I wanted slow. to get back to, your busy mind. So your busy yes. mind, huh, you're playing the Sunset Strip in the 80s. Yeah. How was that busy mind occupied, sir? Well, we had girls, who were one, and, and it was a, it was such a vibrant scene. There was always something to do. Hi, Molly. There was always something to do. So how'd you come out of there without being a cocaine addict? You know, it, it, drugs really weren't, I mean, we partied a lot. Odin was definitely a party band and, and we definitely pushed it. But at the same time, at, I was in a, I had a girlfriend at the time and I, I cared more about, you know, going out and, you know, 
hanging out with her and running around and then then getting high. Yeah, so, right on. And then and then after when I started doing this, you know, in the movies, I didn't have time for it. So really, it, it was more about me just not being around it. And and now that I'm older, it, it, it's not really there. It's like it's not in the L.A. Guns camp at all. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, you know we're, we we can be we can be pretty boring behind the scene. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, man. I've heard that Tracy uh, has a great sense of humor. Oh, phenomenal! Is that yeah? Oh, that's we have true? A, we have yeah. a ton of fun. Let me. I mean, we like have how, a ton what, of fun. Like doing what? Well, just just in general, just hanging out and talking in, in is fun. And and you know our group texts are are. They should make a book out of just our group texts alone because it's. So, Anyone doing any uh, practical jokes on the road or anything like that? You hear a lot of bands doing doing those kinds of things. You know, we don't not to each other. Um, there's a there's a a respect level, I guess. Right? Yeah, we yeah, just yeah. don't do that to each other. But there's definitely a lot of a lot of fun and and you know a lot of laughing and a lot of you know just it's a it's a pretty happy family. Right on. That's know? good. That's yeah. yeah. Good. Hopefully it'll last. You guys are really tight. I, uh, like I said before, I've seen you a couple times live now. Um, before we set this up, so it's not, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Taz Taylor is a good friend of mine. The Taz Taylor band uh, got me in to see L.A. Guns uh, a couple times live, New Year's Eve. Uh, and they're tight as hell. Uh, so if you get a chance to see them on this tour, you have to do that. Uh, they're not glam. Uh, let's get that out of the way. It's not a uh, glam right band. Now. Uh, they're not. <laughs> they kind of got lumped band. into that genre uh, in the 80s there with the other Sunset Strip bands. Uh, they are straight up hard rock. Uh, and Tracy is one of the most underrated guitar players, I think, out there. Yeah, you, you know, people who know who he is knows who know who he yeah, is. Yeah, because he shreds. Yeah, he does. He's a great, he he he's is phenomenal. unreal. Let's change gears a little bit here. What's your favorite movie? I like all the Lord of the Ring movies. And I like Dune. Dune was probably the most recent one I the enjoyed movies. is Dune. You know, I saw that I saw that twice. Mm -hmm. And I saw it again the other night. And then I went back and watched the one that came out in 84. Yeah. There when I was in high school. Yeah, I remember and that. And I thought it was bad back then. Yeah, it's really bad. It's really bad. It is. Yeah. It's really bad. The, the new Dune movie is really good. The old one, no. No, the old one, not uh, so much. Yeah, no, not so but, much. But, you know, they didn't they didn't have CGI back then. and I mean, you couldn't have made Lord of the Rings back then no. to look anything but goofy. No, no. All yeah. those movies. Look, I mean, look at the Conan movies. Yeah, exactly. And 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 uh, what, what was the... the Oh, there was an, uh, so many of the, the, titan, one with Clash, the of the Clash of the Titans. It was all yeah, stop motion and stuff. Yeah, and oh, that was horrible. It was, but I couldn't stop watching. <laughs> right? It yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's definitely <laughs> a classic. Definitely a cult classic. Yeah, but uh, I like those kind of movies, and you know that keeps. And like I said, you know, Vikings and slashing and swords sometimes. Just so, who's the best bike. Bond? Oh. Uh, well, they all. You're have taking their, way too long to answer that question. Yeah, so. you know they all they all have their, they all have their, their thing. I don't know. I you, can't you pick. Can't one. pick one. I'm going to pick Sean Connery. There you go. You got to pick Sean Connery. It's yeah. the only answer. Yeah. Okay, so I, I do have a couple questions here. We want to wrap up with. Yeah. Number one is my go-to drummer question, sir. Okay. And there is a correct answer. All right. Uh, Krupa. So it's a test. It is a test. Krupa or Rich. Well, I mean, Buddy Rich is Buddy Rich. That is the correct answer. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, but Gene Krupa, what Gene, Gene Krupa kind of had that show aspect that, yeah. that took, took it to the, another level. Right? Yeah, yeah, he did. So you had, both of them were. Yeah, there really is no right answer because, yeah, they're both. They're, yeah, they're both just yeah, they're both monsters in, right? in, yeah. in their own way, yeah. legends, yeah. and rightfully so. So who's your, who's your favorite modern drummer? That's not named Sean Duncan. That's today. The, yeah. Um, I like Danny Carey. Yeah. A lot. I like what he does. Um, you know, it, I mean, there's a lot of, there's so many, you know, Ray Lazier is phenomenal, you know, to, to just watch and learn from is those two in particular. You just watch them for 10 minutes yeah. and learn something, you know, right on. and then um, the, right now, I'd say those two are pretty high. 
you know, but there's so many, it right. just doesn't stop. Have you ever played any Motown? Yeah, we, there was a band that me and Jeff and John Bush and Joey Vera had called Ho Cake. And we played nothing but That's a like, super group. Yeah, we played nothing but Motown stuff. Oh, for, God, we that did like two fun. or three gigs. And it was when John was in Anthrax. Yeah, we're doing them here. At yeah, East we Coast did them in here. LA. It was it was years ago. And every once in a while, I'm like, oh, we should do that again just to do it. You know? Yeah, you should. I'd love to hear that. Yeah, I, I want it. <laughs> All right, so everyone, you guys heard that. Uh, LA Guns is touring. Uh, when, when does the tour kick off here? March 6th. March 6th. March 7th, actually. March 7th. Lauderdale. Through summer. Yeah. Um, so if they're anywhere near you, go see them. Uh, trust me, they're a great band to see live. They are so fun, and they're all such excellent musicians, and you guys are so tight. Thanks. Uh, no one would guess that, that you went on tour after two days of practice with them. It sounds like you've been playing with them for well, years. Well, I have now. Well, yeah. Well, how, how, how long has it been? Uh, this I think it's three years. Three years? Okay, yeah. So yeah, obviously you're rehearsing when you're not on the road with the guys. Oh, we don't rehearse. No, you don't. No, we just got... another one of those guys. Oh, we don't rehearse, man. We just show up and play. We just show up and play. That's exactly. Yeah. That's exactly. Yeah, we do. We 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 just don't rehearse. It's like what what songs are we gonna? Matter of fact, I just had a text last night from Johnny, the group text. So what's the set for? The KK Downing tour, and everybody's going back and forth. So pretty soon it'll be there. Yeah. But we just got done doing three weeks. So we're like, we're ready. Yeah, right, sure. And and uh, we're we're busy enough to where we have, you know, we, we don't really need to go in and rehearse the set to go, you know, play. And especially in a uh, in this circumstance, because we're direct support mm -hmm. for KK, and um, that's a forty-five minute set, and that's that's a walking. And once again, uh, for the viewing audience. As soon as my chef's coat is full, we will be auctioning this off at the Metal Hall of Fame. And all proceeds will be going to the charity behind that, Dad. There you go. Drums and Disabilities. So it's right awesome. up here. Let me see. <laughs> all right. We have four who's drinking. Cheers. 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 Let's see how this is. I'm curious. You guys want a beer? It's not enough alcoholic. We're working. Okay. <laughs> Now, your dad wrote a very famous song that anyone who's ever been to a sporting event is familiar with, That's right? right. That's and right. what is this song again? It's called Let's Go. And how does it go? He goes, Let's, Let's go. go. Three, ten. Let's go. That's it. That was written. What's your dad's name? L Lanny Duncan. Lanny Duncan wrote that. What year was that? 1962. 1960. How did he come up with it? What was he doing? The story I heard was he was at a uh, football game in, in, in a high school football game, I want to say it was, and he heard the hand clap. And, and it just stuck in his head. And then it developed. It's kind of a surf song. And it developed into, into that. And then they recorded it. And the routers, which were basically put together, it's a bunch of studio cats. Matter of fact, it was the um, Wrecking Crew. The Wrecking Crew, yeah. yeah they played them. Yeah. And uh, I know, right? Matter of fact, it's in the movie they used a song about the Wrecking Crew, the documentary. Yeah, about it. yeah, yeah. They, it's in that. And it was also in the Avengers, the last Avengers movie, the big Avengers movie, where um, Hawkeye comes out and he's trying to get the kids to come and he does a hand clap. Yeah. He says, let's go. Yeah, yeah. So we got, we, we got paid for that. Right on. <laughs> That's nice. Okay, and that is a wrap, ladies and gentlemen, of this episode of Metal Mastication. My apologies to Bassmaster Billy Sheehan. We did run out of time, and we did have to bump him. Hopefully, we'll get him on next time. Until then, horns up. the first time you played on stage professionally how old were you oh 15 16 13 13 yeah and 13, that was with 14. odin it was or, a, the earliest incarnation of odin yeah this is way my brother it was um it was a battle of the bands at um like a macy's <laughs> yeah <laughs> we won yeah <laughs>